Hi, everyone. I'm Ken. And um, uh, first of all, you can see I'm in my backyard uh, today. Uh, I've got the PST set up, and I wanted to show you some uh, some video taken through it, uh, how to focus, how to adjust the, the tuning mechanism. Uh, so let me flip this around and uh, show you what my setup is. All right, so I've got the PST uh, tracking the sun here. Um, instead of the 18 millimeter C-Max eyepiece, I've thrown a camera on it. This is a uh, 6.3 uh, megapixel camera, which actually frames the sun just perfectly uh, in the little PST. Um, this is the single stack that I'm working with. I actually have the, the dual stack Edelon that I threaded on, and uh, I might show some of that in the video as well. Uh, but I'm going to go back inside and show you the video that I took, just because it's it's too hard to do all this adjustment while holding my phone. Um, plus, it's hard to see. I've got a monitor back there that I was using to focus. It's a little hard to see it without putting a, a towel over your head and uh, darkening things down. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing, first of all, let's see. So here's the focus mechanism. So uh, the first thing you do is focus the, the telescope to get a nice sharp image of the sun. And then the tuning mechanism is right here. And that adjusts the contrast for the features that you're looking at. Um, I've got a Vixen dovetail rail. This is not, this is just one I had sitting in my cabinet. Um, but uh, Coronado makes a um, uh, a dovetail rail designed specifically for the PST, so it grabs both of the little holes uh, and allows you to put it onto any mount that uh, accepts the Vixen rail. Um, and then again, here's the eyepiece. Uh, I've got a camera in there, inch and a quarter, but you can just substitute this out for a uh, the 18 millimeter C-Max eyepiece that it comes with, or of course any other eyepiece if you wanted to go a little bit higher in magnification. All right, well, here's the image, uh, the live image being shown through the PST. I actually just recorded this a few minutes ago, so this is a one-minute video. Um, it's not processed. This is just live through the, the telescope. A lot of times when you see uh, an image of the sun through a Coronado um, uh, telescope, it will be post-processed, right? They'll take thousands of individual images from the video, stack them together, boost the contrast, sharpen up, uh, lose all the turbulence uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, this is just a live image. And... I, I'm pretty impressed. There's a lot to see here before I even start to think about post-processing. So I'm excited about how this uh, image will turn out later. Um, but let me show you some of the features that are visible on the disk of the sun right now. Okay, so first off, you can see a few sunspots. There's one here. There's two up over here. Uh, nearby or around those sunspots, you can see the plagues, P-L-A-G-E-S. Those are the white splotchy areas. Uh, usually associated with a sunspot, though sometimes they're, uh, you can see those uh, anywhere on the sun without a, a sunspot nearby. But right now, I see several close by to the big sunspots. Uh, on the edge, uh, there are some prominence visible. Uh, up on the very top is a small one. There's a few on the right side. And then on the surface, there are these little wormy line structures. Those are the filaments. Those are essentially uh, uh, prominence. But instead of being shown... Uh, in profile uh, on the limb against the black background, you see them looking uh, over top with the sun in the background. So they appear, when they're on the surface, they appear like little darker lines um, instead of uh, a prominence on the edge. Uh, also, if you look at the background of the disk of the sun, you see some granulation. It's not smooth. It's sort of splotchy. That's the solar granulation. It's big convection cells of heat and plasma rising up uh, when it reaches the surface, it sort of spreads out a little bit, cools, and then drops down into the into the surface. Um, and uh, that happens across the entire surface of the sun and is visible in H-alpha. So how did I get here? So there's three steps. You've got to point the telescope at the sun, use the sole range finder that's built in to center it. Then you focus, and then you tune the edelon to get the best contrast. So uh, let's go through, I've already got a point at the sun, so let's go through the steps of focusing and then tuning. Okay, I've switched over to my image capture program because it's easier to, to see it in uh, real time here. So you want to zoom in, uh, pick a good spot. I'm going to pick the sunspot down here. Uh, I think this one down here is probably the best. Um, and then I'm just going to adjust the focus. Um, it, it's It's actually fairly hard to focus on the sun if you don't have... Um, a sunspot because a lot of these features are fairly nebulous. I mean, there's just, they're plasma, it's gas, right? So there's no hard edges. But sunspots are pretty good because they can be pretty 
pretty dense and pretty sharp. So I'm just going to be looking at that sunspot there and focusing back and forth. Maybe the background granulation as well. Um, so just turn that focus knob until you get a nice clean image of the sunspot or the granulation and, and you're basically good to go. All right, the next step is to tune it. And as you can see here, I have completely uh, messed up the tuning. I turned that, um, the Edelon tuning ring uh, all the way to one direction, right, on one side. And you can see sunspots. There's that, there's that sunspot group. Uh, but look at the background. The, the granulation has disappeared. Uh, the prominence is on the edge. You can't see any longer. Um, no filaments. Uh, so you'll want to adjust that ring slowly back and forth until you start to see those details again. And here you can see some of the filaments started to pop in. Um, I do also have to adjust the exposure on the fly. If you're, if you're viewing through the telescope with an eyepiece, you don't have to do this because your eye has a huge dynamic range and you can see all this stuff happening at once. But unfortunately with a camera, the dynamic range is smaller. So as you tune and the brightness changes, you're also gonna have to adjust the exposure a little bit. So, okay, here I've brightened it up a little bit and I've tuned it a bit better. Uh, that filament on the right edge is uh, definitely more visible there. Uh, but I think it can use a little bit more uh, uh, tuning here to, to really bring back the, uh, the, the plagues around that sunspot group on the left. All right, here we go, it's getting better. I adjusted the exposure to bring back some. Look at this detail up on the top. And uh, that sunspot group is looking pretty good. Um, a little bit more adjustments, and I think I will have uh, the uh, precise tuning that I want for the features that I'm looking at. All right, zooming up to the top, that's a nice filament detail. There's details on that little group on the left. I can see some extra prom uh, uh, filaments that I missed before. So I think I've got the tuning uh, pretty nicely done here. Let's adjust the exposure a bit. And um, at this point, I can start thinking about recording a video uh, for post-processing and boosting the contrast through uh, stacking the images. All right, so there we are. Um, I've got the sun where I want it. This is a very nice live view, uh, what you can see on the surface. Um, this, uh, a recording like this could uh, then be put into programs that will um, split the video frame into thousands of individual frames and then analyze it, remove the blurry ones, and then stack the rest of them. And then I can do further post-processing after that to boost the contrast even further. So I'm excited about what I can do uh, with this image. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I also wanted to show you the double stack. Uh, unfortunately, my scene conditions have gotten even worse. I'm, I'm refocusing here with the double stack on. Um, uh, sorry, it's a little blurry right now, but let me sharpen it up. Um, and so this is the PST.5, 0 0.5 angstrom. So look at the um, the contrast boost, The that filament on the right side. Let me just pause it here. The filament on the right side really is popping out. It's much darker than it was before. I'm also noticing even more filaments over here, like little um, extra things that I didn't notice before. And the uh, the plagues really start to stand out. It's a little dimmer. I probably can boost the the, uh, the brightness a little bit. So I'm going to go back and try a different exposure. Um, but yeah, the 0 0.5 really pops out the surface detail compared to the one angstrom. The prominence is at the edge start to disappear a little bit. Not, not really disappear, but they get dimmer, right? So I'd either have to expose a little bit more, uh, maybe do a, a, a stack of a, an exposure for the surface and the edges, um, or, just, or if I just want to look at the prominences by themselves, I can always remove the, the double stack unit and get those even brighter. But the surface detail really pops when you put on the, uh, the double stack Edelon. Um, I hope that helps you get an idea of what you can do with the PST um, from finding the sun, focusing, and then tuning it. All right. Thank you very much. Clear skies.